Jared's life is on the verge of a new change. A shadow of the past is about to emerge, casting a sinister light on his present. It is the story of Jacob Wetterling, a case that has upset the community, to make Jared feel the cold of old wounds reopen. The similarities between the kidnapping of Jacob and his own experience are disconcerting, and Jared finds himself wondering if behind both can hide the same despicable craftsman. He wants to do everything he can to stop him and help find Jacob. On December 13, 1989, almost two months after the disappearance of Jacob Wetterling, Jared Shearill collaborated with FBI agents to make a sketch of the man who assaulted him, and again noticed similarities between the sketch and Danny Heinrich. So, three days later, the FBI interviewed Heinrich. They ask him where he was on the nights that Jared and Jacob were kidnapped, and they find out that he has no alibi for either of them. Danny Heinrich agrees to give them his shoes, a hair sample, and the tires of his car. The prints from the shoes and tires left at Jacob's abduction site are similar, and this helps the officers get a search warrant. Once inside Heinrich's house, they find radio scanners, black boots, and even photos of young boys. However, the police let him keep the photos and leave without anyone knowing why. On February 9, 1990, almost a year after Jared was attacked, the FBI linked the fibers in his snowsuit with a fiber sample taken from the car Danny Heinrich was driving, and he was arrested for Jared's sexual assault. The FBI fills up files with fake documents in an attempt to intimidate him into confessing. They keep him in prison overnight, but he denies everything. The county prosecutor decides there's not enough evidence to charge him for anything and they let him go. Jacob's family refuses to abandon the struggle to find him and continue to believe in justice. I never want to have to look Jacob in the eye and say, you know, I wanted to keep going, but I got tired or it was so long. We never quit, ever. Jared wants to do everything he can to connect his case to Jacob's and find answers. Often the police pull him out of the class at school, and even if they try to keep his identity private, rumors quickly spread in the small town that is the boy who was attacked. Jared's family decides to leave Cold Spring, hoping to help him move on and feel like a normal guy again. They want to protect him from all the pressure, and also from the aggressor, who still roams free and undisturbed. They move about 20 miles away to Painesville, Minnesota, hoping life will become quieter. For decades, the case of Jared Shirel and the kidnapping of Jacob Wetterling remain unsolved. There seems to be no hope of finding Jacob or catching the man who took him. But over 20 years after the kidnappings, a blogger, Joy Baker, will make a discovery that will change everything. I was looking for something new to write about, and a story came on the news about the Jacob Wetterling case, and I thought, what happened here? She spends a lot of time in the library and online, reading old newspaper articles. So she soon realizes she has to talk to Jared. Around 2013, Joy Baker contacted Jared. He had found a newspaper article about a series of unsolved kidnappings and assaults on young boys in Painesville, Minnesota, the town where Jared and his family had moved after the attack in Cold Spring, just about 20 miles away. Since 1986, three years before the attacks by Jared and Jacob, there have been many police reports of a man terrorizing children in Painesville. He would follow kids on bikes or just walk around town. He would grab them, ask them their age, and attack them before letting them go. The police could never stop the man or find out who he was. When Joy talks to Jared, she is shocked. This is the first time she has heard of these other cases in Painesville. For Joy and Jared, no doubt, all the cases are connected. For decades, Jared thought he was the only survivor. But as soon as he finds out there are others, he decides to conduct his own investigation. It could be the link the police need to find Jacob and bring justice to all the young boys and families affected by the assailant. That initially was the reason that drove me to the amount of investigating and researching that I have done, is the fact that I am a parent now. Over the years, Jared and Joy continue to investigate. They do countless hours of research, and Jared finds and contacts other survivors. Finally, after all Jared and Joy's work, investigators re-examine Painesville's cases, along with Jared's. Authorities still have a hair sample from an early suspect who lived in Painesville at the time, Danny Heinrich. With advances in technology, investigators are able to use DNA from Jared's clothes. He was wearing the night of his attack and compare it to the DNA from Heinrich's hair sample. It's a match. The police now have concrete evidence that Heinrich is the one who attacked Jared. But unfortunately, Jared finds out that he can't put him in prison for this. Even though Jared can't get Heinrich convicted of his case, 
he still wants to help other families who need answers. Because of the work done by Joy and Jared, the police are able to investigate Jacob's disappearance further. They get a search warrant for Heinrich's house. They can't find any evidence of Jacob or the Painesville attacks, but they do find child pornography collectors. On July 28, 2015, Heinrich was arrested for child pornography. Investigators believe he kidnapped Jacob, but they still have no definitive evidence, and they may never know where Jacob is or what happened to him if Heinrich doesn't confess. In a desperate attempt to get answers, they propose a shocking deal for him. If he shows them where Jacob is, then he won't be charged in his case. They'll drop all charges, except child pornography. Federal attorney Andrew Luger thinks it's the only way to get the truth and the Wetterlings agree to offer the deal to Heinrich. These families and the state of Minnesota have been looking for answers for almost 27 years. Heinrich accepts the deal. After only 10 minutes in court, the prosecutor asks if he kidnapped, sexually assaulted, and killed Jacob Wetterling. He responds quietly. Yes, I did. He keeps explaining what happened when he took Jacob. After he attacked him, Heinrich thought he saw a police car patrolling nearby. He panicked and shot Jacob. He also confesses to Jared's kidnapping and sexual assault before taking the agents to a location just outside downtown Painesville, where he buried Jacob's body. Because of the exchange of confession he made, Danny Heinrich is not charged with Jacob's murder, but in 2016 he is sentenced to 20 years in prison for child pornography. He'll be 70 when he gets out. Jacob's death is now a painful reality, but families finally have the truth about what happened almost 30 years ago. Patty Wetterling always repeats that now they feel a feeling of calm knowing that Jacob is not suffering. Jacob's parents created the Jacob Wetterling Foundation, a program that helps families of missing children. Patty Wetterling has served as chairman of the board of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and is a well-known advocate today. Without Jared Shirell telling his story and his work with Joy Baker to get justice, the Wetterlings may never have known what happened to Jacob. Today, the Wetterlings are still close to Jared and Joy, who have helped bring answers to many families who have fought for decades.